Uh, great. So let's uh, continue the class. Uh, so, uh, so far, again, we have seen the motivation for game theory, lots of places that you can see game theory is going on. And then we talk about formalizations and some solution concepts so far, like Pareto Optimal, Nash Equilibrium, Epsilon Nash. And we talk how we can find actually Pareto Optimal or Nash Equilibrium or Epsilon Nash, we didn't talk that much, but can do similar things because Nash anyhow is Epsilon Nash. Today we are seeing more solution concepts that the people have considered it. And as well as uh, next session. So uh, let's start uh, with two concepts, uh, rationality. Mm. Just... Yes. So uh, this is the uh, rationality and correlated equilibrium. So these are both of them in some sense are the solution concept that we are considering. And both of them are generalizations of Nash equilibrium. It means that Nash equilibrium would be a rationalizable, um, essentially, um, strategy profile as well as a correlated equilibrium. And we will talk about both of them. Mm, good. So let me. Everything. Good. What is the rationalizability? So uh, this rationalizability and common knowledge is very similar to each other, and they have some kind of recursive definitions. So the strategy is rationalizable for an agent I if a perfectly rational agent could justifiably play it against perfectly rational opponents. So uh, again, it is rationalizable. If a perfectly rational agent could justifiably, that justifiably is important play it against perfectly rational opponents. Let's see the, uh, uh, um. So uh, this is, I mean, like you can see the formal definition in the references, like book references that we have it. But here we want to give the, the ideas and you understand what's the uh, meaning of that. Good. So, Uh, a strategy for agent I, like SI, is rationalizable. If it is the, so here is, could justify, means that it is the best response. So this is the justifiability. It's the best response to a strategy that I could reasonably believe the other agents have. So, uh, so you can think about this one. So we can say that my strategy is rationalizable. If my strategy is the best response to some other strategies by other players that I can reasonably believe they may choose that. So this reasonably is important. So to be reasonable, I believe must take into account these factors. So this, note, this is the part that I mentioned is the recursive knowledge. The other agent's knowledge of I's rational ability. Their knowledge of I's knowledge of their rationality, rationality, and so on and so forth. So, uh, again, you want to say that this is the best response to some reasonable strategies or uh, that the other agents are doing. And this means that 
uh, ICE belief must include into the account that other agents' knowledge of ICE rationality. So they should know that ICE rational. Not only that, their knowledge of ICE knowledge of their rationality. So, and this is essentially recursive. You can continue this. Yeah. Yeah. And so on and so forth. So, now uh, that is a strategy uh, SI, which is reasonable. What about a rationalizable strategy profile? Uh, of course, a profile always means vector. Is a strategy profile that consists only of rationalizable strategies. So if you are considering essentially like S1, S2 to Sn, these are the players, each of them should be a rationalizable strategy that each of these N player is taking. Let's see an example, then it would be more clear. Good. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, like the first thing is the which side of the road, and one thing which is uh, especially important is this that every Nash equilibrium is composed of rationalizable strategies. So you can say that I mean, if you want to find a rationalizable strategy profile, you can just take, consider the Nash equilibrium. Why? Because everyone essentially uh, is a best response to other best responses. And in some sense, uh, so this, uh, things that we defined here that uh, like uh, we, that was somehow the informal definition that agent I is rationalizable if it's the best response to a strategies that I could reasonably believe the other agents have. So uh, reasonably believe the other agents have means that these other agents also have best responses the situation. And you know that in the Nash, everyone essentially is doing the best response to the rest of the players. So uh, what we know what we know is that uh, the set of rationalizable strategies So we know that the set of rationalizable strategies and of course a strategy profile is always non-empty because we know that always Nash is inside. Let's, uh, I mean, discuss uh, that one in a more detailed way for this particular thing. So uh, it, this is important. Every Nash equilibrium is composed of rationalizable strategies. However, there are some rationalizable strategy profiles which are not Nash. And we will discuss that. Uh, so in the next example, but uh, let's see. I mean, uh, let's see this recursive definition first. I think that would be a very good one to see. So which side of the road the game? Of course, this is the normal form game representation. So for agent one, here the pure strategy S one left is a rationalizable strategy. Why? Again, I should believe that others uh, uh, will take this one. So this is always the definition. So I could reasonably believe the other agents have these uh, strategies. So we need to justify essentially this part. I could reasonably believe the other agents have it. 
and it should be best response to that. So for agent one, the pure strategy S1 is going to lift is rationalizable. Why? Because S1 lift is one's base response if two uses S2 equal to lift. So if uh, this is one, this is two. I, so here, S1 is equal to left is the best response if two uses S2 equal to left. Now, the only thing is that we need to show that S2 equal to left is something that uh, like reasonably one should believe that two takes <laughs> left action. So yes, it is the best response, but we should say that this uh, this is best response to an action that is that action is also rationalizable for agent two. Otherwise, I mean, if this is just some I don't know, not a good move. This is not a good thing. So, this is the second part that we need to that we are showing. One can reasonably believe two would rationally use S two equal to left. Why? So this is the claim because S two equal to left is the two's best response if one uses S1, S1 left. So here we say, okay, this one is taking left. Why? Because this other person, this is the best response if this other person two takes left. But then why two takes left? We can say that two takes left because uh, left is the best response if one takes left. But then here, we need to say again this recursive part that why one take left is a rationalizable strategy. So here, we need to say that two can reasonably believe one would rationally use S1 equal to left. Why? Because again, S1 left is the one's best response if one uses S2 equal to left. So this is the recursive thing that now, uh, again, uh, uh, like essentially, we should continue that. Uh, why S1 left is the one's best response? Uh, if two, I mean, so we know that S1 equal to left is one best response if two uses S2 equal to left. But then why, uh, uh, like one can reasonably believe that uh, two would rationally use S2 equal to left. Because again, uh, one can believe that because uh, left is best response to uh, uh, like, like uh, S2 equal to left, like a uh, second player um, playing left is the best response to one taking left. And here you see that we are essentially coming to the same recursion. So in some sense, we are done here because we essentially, as soon as we can get some kind of cycle to the same thing, then we are in a good shape because now everyone can believe that and this rationalizability essentially, if we continue, it just goes to the cycle. So now we are actually in a rationalizable strategy profile. So left, left essentially becomes, a, I mean, a rationalizable strategy. And as I mentioned, this is not a surprise because it's a Nash equilibrium, but we just wanted to go through the definition. Good. So that's the first part. But now see more interesting things that we have a rationalizable strategy profile, which is not a Nash. Uh, so there are some rationalizable strategies which are not part of any Nash. Let's consider the matching pennies game. So this was the normal form 
representation of that. And if you remember, we didn't have any um, pure Nash equilibrium. So we had a, of course, we had a mixed Nash that takes every strategy with probability one half, one half. But here I want to give a strategy profile which is pure and rationalized. So let's see the example. So for agent one, the pure strategy S1 equal to head. So it just take, so this is one. Let me actually delete everything. Okay. So for agent one, so this is one and this is two. Head is a, so S1 is a head, is a rationalizer. Why? Because S1 is heads is the one's best response if two uses heads. So if two uses heads and so so if two use heads, then uh, here this is the best response. You should not play tail. You should play heads. So it would be because you get one essentially. So S1 heads is the one's best response if two uses S2 equal to heads. Now, we need to say that why S2 equal to heads is a rationalizable strategy. So one can reasonably believe two would rationally use S2 equal to heads. Why? Because S2 equal to head is two's best response if one uses S1 equal to tails. So if uh, two is using uh, why two is a Essentially, a head is a reasonable or rationalizable things because two heads is actually best response if one uses tail, essentially. Why? Because if they are doing that, then he gets one. So uh, one can uh, reasonably, I mean, believe that two is using heads, but we are not done yet, but we need to do continue this. Now, the issue is that, yes, uh, two can reasonably believe one would rationally use S1 equal to tails. Because here we assume that uh, S2 equal to heads is the two's best response if one uses S1 equal to tails. Now, we should justify why S1 equal to tails is a good one. Why? Because S1 equal to tails is the first, is the one's best response if two uses S2 equal to tails. So he, here he uses tails. That, that is the best response if this person is using tails. Because in this case, then the first person gets one. So that is a, a reasonable thing to assume that, uh, I mean, one is best response, but we are not done yet. We need to do that until we, until we get essentially a cycle. Now, one can reasonably believe that S2 would rationally use S2 equal to tails. Why? Because S2 equal to, so tails is the best response if one uses heads essentially. And so here essentially one uses head is essentially the first one. So because essentially one uh, is taking heads. And this is essentially the first, the same thing that we had it here. So we had this kind of uh, essentially from one strategy, we went to another one. I mean, for this discussion, and then from one to other one, and then from here to here, and then finally we came back to the same thing. So that means that as long as we can get this kind of uh, cycles that goes essentially to itself, I mean, of course, cycle by definition goes to itself, of this kind of reasoning, then we got a, a essentially strategy profile. So uh, what's the meaning of that? So here it means that S1 equal to heads is indeed a rationalizable strategy uh, uh, for one. You can say the same thing for two takes heads 
or two takes tails or one takes tails. So in some sense here, every one of these things like headsets, and head's tail, uh, then uh, tail heads, and tails, tails. <laughs> Indeed, all of them are rationalizable strategy profile. So all of them are Rationalizable strategy. So all of them. Which was not the case for Nash equilibrium. None of them were Nash equilibrium. But all of them are rationalizable because we can essentially create this cycle. And this is some kind of uh, rationalizability and this definition of recursive. So uh, that is uh, essentially the definition of rationalizability. That is uh, very related, this kind of rationalizability, uh, especially this part that we are uh, talking about. To be reasonable or rationalizable. So that is the one that uh, is actually very important that I believe must take into account the other agents' knowledge of I's rationality and their knowledge of I's knowledge of their rationality. And I mean, you can continue. This is also would be the uh, I's uh, knowledge of their knowledge of eyes knowledge of their rationality and so on and so forth this is like some recursive thing that we have it we have exactly the same thing uh, here for the concept of common knowledge so we may hear i mean this is a very uh, like easy term to use but the definition is not that trivial essentially it's again the uh, some kind of recursive definition of common knowledge. Say, oh, this is a common knowledge. But what is the exact meaning of the common knowledge? We say that a property P is common knowledge So a property P is common knowledge if so essentially a property is a common knowledge if everyone knows P. Not only that, everyone knows that everyone knows P. Not only that, everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows P. And then like everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows P. That is the definition of a common knowledge. And that is important. This is very similar to rationalizability that this kind of the reasonable things you need to do recursive things. And this is like when we hear about common knowledge, this is actually a, it seems an easy thing to so generally the, the simplest form is this one that everyone knows P, but it is not enough. So we need to also know that everyone knows that everyone knows P. Why? Because if you know this strategy, then your strategy might be different. If uh, not only everyone knows P, but this should be also a common knowledge that everyone knows P, and so on and so forth. So you can think about it. You may hear about it, and I mean, you can read more about it, but I just want to mention that even this concept of common knowledge is not a trivial thing. Because just the fact that everyone knows P is not enough. Also, you need to add, add that everyone knows that everyone knows P. And not only that, then you say that everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows. If you think about it, then you actually you see that why it completely makes sense to have these things. Uh, good. So, uh, We aren't 
necessarily rational. When we play the game. Why? Or like the people are not necessarily are rational players. So why should we essentially choose an irrational strategy? For several possible reasons. Why, I mean, we can essentially, uh, we or players in general can take irrational strategies. So one thing is that there might be some limitation in reasoning abilities. Like, it's not the case that everyone's like a computer or have access to the computer. So first, for example, they cannot calculate the Nash equilibrium correctly. I mean, if we consider the concept of Nash equilibrium or, uh, or they cannot even compute the best result. They don't know how to calculate it. I mean, that's another issue. And they may not even know the concept. So I'm playing the chess, but I don't know about this. I mean, I didn't take the course essentially. The other thing that actually common mistake that happens, this is the wrong payoff matrix. So, you have this matrix, but it doesn't encode correctly agents' actual preferences. As I mentioned, if you know the actual preferences, and if we have this kind of ordering on the preferences, then we can give the utility which are corresponding to the number. Of course, these are some conditions that you need to have it, and the people may not actually turn into the correct normal form game. So it is a common error that you may take some external measures, say that, oh, this is like, this is your normal form game, but this is not my payoff. My payoff is something else, essentially. For example, in the carrot game or chocolate game, I have some other things. I want to be helpful to the other people. I, uh, I want to just do, I'm curious in some sense. I want to create mischief. I want to venting frustration. All of these, these are some reasons that the people consider it and say that, okay, you have the normal form case, the matrix essentially, but uh, when you have that matrix, that matrix does not encode all my preferences. And that's the reason that I may seem irrational given the normal form. And the idea is that actually, if really money is the most important things, or being curious, or being helpful, those type of things, we should try to consider them in your utility function and encode them when we write your utility. So don't say the utility is essentially if you get just three carrots, but say that, I mean, if you want to be also helpful to the others. So somehow you need to consider that and make it essentially some kind of reasonable. Uh, numbers out of it. In some sense, we should take in everything into numbers if we can, and based on that, do the analysis. Of course, uh, I mean, some people, is it, there might be something that you say that it is not linear, I cannot make it into a number, that is different thing. So not always we can do that, but uh, lots of cases still we can consider all this objective function that you have it, give a price tag to it, and or give a number tag to it and then put that number actually. So don't put three essentially as the number of carrots. You may need to add three plus, I don't know, another, I don't know, 0 0.5 because this 0 0.5 is that I want to be helpful to the others. So the actual thing is not three, it is 3.5. But that's another thing that can possibly solve this one. Uh, of course, so the reason is that, I mean, we are not, Rational is that, I mean, the limitations in reasoning ability, we have a wrong payoff matrix that we are talking about it. And this is the third one, which is also very important, beliefs about the other agents' likely actions. 
So what's the meaning of that? So uh, what was the definition of Nash equilibrium? The definition of Nash equilibrium was that a Nash equilibrium strategy is best for you if other agents also use Nash equilibrium strategies. So in the Nash equilibrium, you, this is the best response if others essentially also use some kind of Nash equilibrium. But what about if others, they don't use the Nash equilibrium things? So in some sense, in the Nash equilibrium, you are doing the best response to the current strategies of others, essentially, which we believe that all of them are essentially in the best response. But it might be the case that the other agents use don't use their Nash equilibrium strategy. So you may, essentially, you may have this uh, S1, S2, S3, say, for example, here. And here, S1 assumes that S2 and S3, uh, like this was the definition, that S1 is the best response if S2 and S3 also, they don't want to change their strategies. And here, by the definition, S2 also should be best response to S1 and S3, and S3 should be the best response to S1 and S2. But these other agents may take different, essentially, action. They may not take the best response. Of course, in general, if you can guess what actions they are choosing, so if they may not choose essentially Nash, but they may choose something else. If they choose some kind of a stupid move, then if you essentially, then in that case, you may do a, you might be in a better shape if you choose another best response. So in some sense, that happens a lot that uh, like, if others, they are not playing essentially in Nash equilibrium, then you may, and you have a good knowledge about their possible actions, if you know their secret, then you are just taking the best response to their actions, not to the action in the Nash equilibrium. Somebody said, oh, this is a Nash equilibrium, and this is a unique Nash equilibrium. So there's, that is the only one, like matching pennies game. This is the only Nash equilibrium. But you know that the other player is not doing Nash equilibrium strategy. He's just doing one particular strategy. If you know that this guy is doing essentially tails, then, for example, you may want to do tails as well. Because you have knowledge of that. If you know the knowledge, then you will use the knowledge. Of course, in this case, if this is a good guess, then you may do better than Nash equilibrium. But it may happen that uh, you have a bad case and they are taking other things. So in that case, then you may get worse. So uh, Nash equilibrium in some sense is just good by the, uh, by the limitations of its definitions. Which is good if you are, uh, this is the best response if others essentially they don't want to change their strategy and they are playing this particular set of strategies. But if the others want to change it and you know what is that thing, then you might be better to take a different action. And of course, if you guess it wrongly, you might be in a worse situation. So these are some of the reasons. And the third one, as I mentioned, if, whenever you have some knowledge about, uh, so you may take this action, this is, oh, it's not a very reasonable thing. Why do we take it? Because I have some secret knowledge that the other agency is taking this action and, and this thing is a stupid action, but they, they may take it. And this is the best response to that stupid action. Mm, good. Okay, now let's go to another very interesting concept, which is the concept of, and we gave some introduction to that in the battle of sexes, essentially, game. Concept of correlated equilibrium. So this is actually very a nice quote from Roger Mayes. And you may use this one essentially for other things, not just <laughs> correlated equilibrium, probably there are other things like that. But this is the interesting thing. He said that if there is an intelligent, if there is an intelligent life on other planets, in a majority of them, 
they would have discovered correlated equilibrium before Nash equilibrium. Of course, they should be smart enough to get this rich, to get uh, this um, status that they are thinking about this stuff. But if they can do that, they may get correlated equilibrium before Nash equilibrium. So that is from Roger Mayes. And let's see what is this definition that is so natural in some sense, at least to uh, Roger. And Roger Mason is actually a famous economist. I have lots of nice work there. So, Correlated equilibrium is a generalization of Nash equilibrium. It means that every Nash equilibrium is a correlated equilibrium, but not necessarily the reverse. So this comes essentially from this idea. You have a traffic light. You can think about God, I don't know, possibly a good dictator or something like this. He's doing a fair random, which is what is this? It is a fair randomizing device that tells one of the agents to go and to the other same weight. So that's essentially this is the traffic light. And this is some way of coordination, some device for coordination. And you are assuming that yeah, traffic light is a fair thing. It's not part of the game itself. So it's a fair randomizing device that Gives, essentially gives the actions or suggests the action to others, and everyone obeys. So in some sense, correlation equilibrium comes from the concept of traffic light. So traffic light, say that this is a, some kind of fair things. And again, uh, you may or may not believe that the traffic light is, uh, is a fair one, because you may go to some place and uh, like, some of these intersections, traffic light may take much more for one direction compared to the other. So uh, assume that I mean that essentially, but you may say that okay, there are some reasons because of more traffic, etc., that I need to wait more than the other parties. Uh, anyhow, so uh, this concept of coordination through a traffic light, but but at the same time, you know that given that the traffic light is there, it is very dangerous to pass it, say, especially if at night that you cannot see it well, because you may kill yourself or you may kill others. So that comes from this concept of coordination, that the people trust this coordination. What are the benefits? It is easier to compute than Nash. It is polynomially solvable. And this, is, this will be done through a linear program that we will talk about it. You can get the fairness achieved essentially, because we can also put in the objective function to be fair, uh, I mean, by to some extent. And the sum of the social welfare exceed that of a Nash equilibrium. As I mentioned, a Nash equilibrium is a correlated equilibrium. So if we consider this more relaxed things, so the social welfare, and social welfare is some of the utilities of the people. You can be always assume that it is better like greater than or equal to Nash equilibrium because Nash equilibrium is a correlated equilibrium. Always you can have a Nash equilibrium as a backup solution, but you may have more solutions. Good. So uh, let's uh, come back to this game. that we discussed before. So this uh, game that uh, we had it, the uh, correlated equilibrium, and we discussed, like, so if you remember, in the Battle of Sexes game, we had a few uh, equilibrium. So, uh, so we had this Nash equilibrium, 2, 1. We had this other pure Nash equilibrium, 1, 2. And we had a mixed strategy 
which was two third opera. So this one was two third opera and one third football. This is for wife and for husband was uh, two third football and one third opera. Now, if you uh, remember, so what? What was the chance that we will, uh, so what is the chance that we get into this? For each of them, we just multiply. So what was Nash equilibrium again? We have some probability distributions over the uh, pure strategies. And then for each of them, and we had, this is the main thing. We had this concept of independence that we assume that the husband's actions and wife's actions, these are independent. So what is the chance that we are getting into football? This would be two-third times two-third. Why we can multiply this? Because of the independence of the actions of wife and husband. So two-third, two-third, we got it essentially, uh, this opera versus football versus football versus opera. That was one-third to one-third, which is... And again, each of these entries we had uh, this probability. So what is the landing probability? You could just multiply this. Why? Because we have this concept of independence between the actions of husband and wife. And we are considering some kind of simultaneous game that each of them independently is choosing. So here, if you see, we had this thing that, uh, so here, uh, two third times two third, that would be four ninths. And here would be one third times ten, which is one nine. So this five over nine probability, we are landing to these places. So we are landing into these places. That essentially has zero payoff for most of them. Sometimes it is fair, but uh, you know, lots of the time I mean, you are going to the bad places. So this is fair, as we mentioned. Each agent is equally likely to get his or her preferred activity, but five over nine of the time they choose a different activity and they get a utility of zero. And that was the thing that, if you remember, we computed the expected utility is only two thirds. So each agent expected utility is only two thirds. Uh, so if you sum it up, it would be four over three, which is barely essentially over, over, over one. While if they are taking this opera or if both taking opera or both taking football, then the actual payoff that they will get, this is a social welfare would be essentially three. The, so, the sum of them, and each of them essentially here they get at least at most two thirds, but here each of them get at least one. So in some sense, both in terms of individual payoff, and payoff and utility are the same by the way. So individual payoff or utility, and the sum of the payoffs, we are in much worse shape uh, comparing essentially to the other cases that both go to opera or both go to football. And, and all of them come from this thing that I mentioned. We are assuming that they are doing a simultaneous game and they are taking these actions, their choices independently. We discussed that, uh, uh, if you remember, we discussed when we talk about the mixed strategy that we can have another thing. This is essentially this kind of traffic light uh, or coordination. We can coordinate their choices How can and it can be a fair thing. They can just flip a coin. And they can, by this coincidence, that if it hit, then we are going both, we go to opera. And if it tails, we both go to football, essentially. So you can eliminate cases where they choose different activities. And so uh, this is essentially, this is the whole concept that, I mean, instead of just going independently, why don't we have this one? We can... Okay, let's talk with each other. This is like essentially taking some kind of correlations. I will do essentially 
toss a coin. If it, like any of us can toss a coin, if it becomes heads, we both go to opera, and if it becomes tail, we will go to football. So in this case, each agent payoff will always be one and two. So it is individually, they are in a much better shape, and their expected utility is 1.5. And in both cases, the social welfare actually is three. That's the whole essentially, like, it's a very good motivation to consider this kind of uh, coin flips and talk about the concept of correlated equilibrium, which is a generalization of a national. Okay. So uh, what is, I mean, uh, let's define the correlated equilibrium definition. So let G be a, a two agent, I mean, a two agent game. I mean, you can define it for more than that. As we discussed in the Nash equilibrium, we always had this one. Uh, that so uh, this is the so we have essentially this so you say for this one uh, I mean you can have actually more strategies so this is like it's a bigger game say here for this, this one is two we are taking two actions q1 q2 and q prime one and Q prime two. You can have more actions. But we knew that for each of them, we will computing this P of one one, which was Q one times Q prime one. And so on and so forth. So we had this in general, we have these actions. I mean Q and Q prime are this kind of mixed strategies or distributions. And then we know that some of the QIs and some of because these are distribution, the sum of the probabilities would be one. Each of them takes independently. And then we had this concept of PIJ, that it is, so the landing probability would be always would be equal to QI times Q prime J. And one important thing, we knew that the sum of all PIJs is equal to one. Now, the main difference between Nash equilibrium and correlated equilibrium is that we are removing this condition. So we are removing this concept of independence that PIJ should be QI times Q prime J. That assumption we will just remove. We are essentially keeping all other properties. So in some sense, this is a relaxation. What's the meaning of that? Before we had this assumption that these PIJs always uh, PIJs, this uh, landing probability should be always coming from this assumption of independence that should be QI times Q prime J. Now, and this actually the one that makes computing the Nash equilibrium hard because you need to compute these numbers such that these PIJs always like PIJ is always there's a formula for PIJ. You can just get Q uh, I times Q prime J. In the correlated equilibrium, we don't have this property anymore. Still, we have the sum of the probability should be equal to one, but we don't necessarily need to find this independent Q I's and Q prime I's, Q prime J's essentially, such that PIJ is multiplications of these two numbers. So what is the things? So essentially, uh, uh, we are just doing this one for each of these uh, uh, people, for, uh, for each of these cells, uh, we are just, uh, we don't have this assumption anymore. What's the meaning of that? It means that we have a total probability PIJ equal to one, we distributed as we wish into the cells of the normal form. In some sense, the landing probabilities 
we are allowed to put any numbers there as long as they are greater than or equal to zero and the sum is equal to one. But you don't need to have to find this kind of independence QI and QJ, uh, Q, QI and Q prime J essentially, such that PIJ is always the multiplications of that. So we are uh, relaxing this assumption or we are removing this assumption. So that means that essentially a relaxed definition. And of course, as I mentioned, this is the generalization of Nash equilibrium because Nash equilibrium always, this is one way of distribution, distributing these PIJs that these are just multiplication, but there might be other ways. When we remove this, when we relax this constraint, we may have other solutions. And now the good thing is that for a general N player game, now we can compute a correlated equilibrium in any, like in polynomial time by a linear programming that we will talk next session. Good. So that's the one that uh, we are uh, talking about. Uh, so uh, we can uh, actually, uh, let me, so if we want to see how can we compute that. Uh, this, I mean, we have the thing in this slide, but I, I find it actually this, uh, So, uh, okay, so take essentially A. So if you remember, A was the set of all So A was set of all action profiles. So what's the meaning of A? A essentially means all the cells of this normal form game. It can be essentially more than two players. A means essentially set of all uh, essentially cells. Because each cell is corresponding to an action profile or corresponding to pure strategy profile. So what do we say? So the first thing is that, and now for each, so A belongs to A means that essentially A is a cell. So uh, capital A is a set of all cells. And uh, like non-capital A, it means that essentially is just one particular set. What does this one say? Says that the probability of taking, like for the landing probability for each cell should be greater than or equal to zero. And the sum of the probabilities should be equal to one. So that's the thing that we had it. Now, what is the, I mean, then this concept of best response, that's the thing that we need to actually write it down. Uh, so, this is essentially the conditions that we have it here. So, what do we say? We say that, uh, like, for each, uh, maybe actually I can just, this, this is, you can go from this one, but we can write it down in this lecture note, it might be a bit better. Mm. Okay, see, let's go with this one essentially. So what does this say? It says that uh, if you take a, uh, so these are the PI, PA. So these PA are the variables that you try to do that. So PA is essentially, as I mentioned, PA, is the, what do we want to compute? We want to compute these probabilities, the landing probabilities, such that the sum of them is equal to one and each of them is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, and of course, we don't put this condition that there should be multiplications of two numbers. So PA is actually or variables. So these are the variables in the LP. So P of a particular thing. So of course you can compute like a, how many cells do we have in a normal form matrix for a particular game? That would be the number of variables that we have. Now, what does this one say? It says that uh, 
consider all essentially uh, cells that you are taking the action AI. So consider, for example, in the two case, so you are taking essentially this action AI, these two players. So uh, consider this particular uh, column that this player essentially one, player two is taking AI. Then, and we have for each of them, we have the probability. So we have this probability, I don't know, probability, uh, we will call it probability. This is the action one, two, three. We say that the action one AI, this is the P of two AI, and this is the P of three. Good. So we are going essentially for this, you, you can generalize this one essentially for any things, but if, uh, like for more number of players, but say in the two player game, this when this person is taking AIs, we have these probabilities that we are computing, and these probabilities are the random, the variables of this LP. Now, what you are saying, you want to say that this, if you take this player two, and then you multiply each of these probability times the utility of agent I in this case. So each of them, they have some utility. So if you take this one, what is the utility for agent two? What is the utility for agent two in this case? You just multiply this probability, landing probability, times the utility that we'll get. So, so far it's just essentially expected utility if you take AI. That should be greater than or equal to if you take any other actions, A prime I, instead of AI. However, still we are using the same probabilities. So if, what about if you take an action I, I prime, like uh, actually I will say uh, A I prime, that would be a better thing for. So if you take any other action, the util so here you have some utilities. Uh, let me just put a, it's a different color. So uh, here we have some utility. So these are the utilities that you are multiplying times this. Here, if you take this other action in each of these cases, you may have a different utility. But both of them should be multiplied by the same probability. So the, the probability is still the probability that you are computing for column I. So that essentially says that if you are taking action AI in this case, with these probabilities that I have computed, that you will be better off comparing to any other strategy that you are playing. Again, with the same set of probabilities that I have computed here. And that's essentially the, the thing that he's talking about. He said that in both of us, essentially here also you have this UI, AI, you can write it like this. Yes, uh, uh, so uh, here, uh, this is essentially the things that we are saying that if you take, so if this is if this probability that I'm computing it, and in general, this is for more than two players. So any other action profile that others taking it, if I take AI, and with the probability that I computed for this one, if I take another action A prime I, with the same things, again, the probabilities are the same in both of them, then I will be better if I take essentially AI compared to it. So that's essentially the concept of equilibrium part that we are putting it. And here, as I mentioned, PAs are variables. Uh, yeah, I will answer questions. Uh, give me a second. And then we have this uh, constants. So UI A's, these are the ones that are given to us uh, these are the things that are given to us essentially by the normal form matrix. So we know that, so this is essentially the utilities that we have in normal form games. And then here, 
Uh, I mean, so this is the probability essentially the, just for the equilibrium. Now you can add even more conditions. So if you want to, this, is the, this LP does not have any objective. As long as you will find any feasible solution, you will get a correlated equilibrium. But now you can find a social welfare maximizing correlated equilibrium by adding this objective function. What's the meaning of that? He said that uh, you want to essentially for any probability that landing probability that we are going, uh, taking uh, also take this, what is the landing probability here times the sum of the utilities of this agents here. So if this is the probability that we are coming here, in this case, what are the sum of the utilities? That times this probability. That means that means the social expected social welfare in this case, if we land here, you will sum it up over all cells of the matrix, and that's the one that you are maximizing essentially for your uh, like expected utility. So you can actually find a socially welfare maximizing correlated equilibrium as well because you can put these objective functions here. Uh, great. So let me clear everything and then go to the last slide. This is the same thing that I have mentioned essentially. So uh, here, uh, this is somehow the idea that in general, in a in a agent game, So in an N agent game, nature or essentially traffic light chooses this some action profile, A1 to AN, randomly according to this complicated joint probability distribution or correlated equilibrium. So uh, what's the meaning of that? Uh, so you can think about this one. We are computing this matrix essentially. Then, a, a traffic light, or I don't know, nature, or God, or something. It just shoots. I mean, this is the this is the this is the probability distribution over the cells of this matrix. So it chooses just one of them at random, and now tells privately. So this is say, for example, a i. This is a prime i. It tells privately to the agent one to agent two that you should take this action. So it just lands here. If you just toss a coin essentially on this probability distribution to land here. So this part is random. This tells to agent one, this is the action that you should take, AI. To the agent two, say that this is the agent, this is the action that you should take, A prime I. This is exactly like a traffic light. What does the traffic light? It says this is the state. You should stop, you should go essentially. And it is somehow private. Of course, here in traffic light, maybe you can see the other side, but this is the things. Uh, actually, uh, this private one is not, uh, I mean, that you can relax that one as well. Now, uh, here, uh, this is the thing is that, uh, now, it says that according to this probability that I have computed, if you want to change your action, again, with the same probability, you cannot change unilaterally the pro probability. Probability are computed. But you can change your action if you want. But... I can guarantee that if you go according to my action, you will get a better expected payoff. So what's the meaning of that in the traffic light sense? Uh, it means that I will tell you, you should stop and the other person should go. You have the option to change essentially your things and go. But if you go, there's a good chance that you have a crash. So expected utility is better that you wait until it is your turn and then you can go there. Uh, so, uh, uh, of course, here again, the same thing that we are talking about, we assume that the other agents are rational. So it means that this, always we have these things that like in the Nash equilibrium, we had the same thing that we are assuming that uh, these other agents are rational. So uh, uh, what's the meaning of that? It means that if this is a traffic light, if the traffic light mentioned to someone that you should go, to the other party say go, then they are going. Of course, if they are irrational and they say go and they don't just play with their cell phone and they don't go, then you may actually don't obey the action that say stop and go and nothing happens. But 
assuming that they are also rational, they are taking the advice of this traffic light, then I can guarantee that because of this probability distribution that I have computed, if you take any other actions, again, with the same probability that I have computed here, then you are not in a better shape. So the good thing is that, uh, I mean, uh, so this why Roger Meyerson mentioned that the interesting, yes, this concept that like we have this kind of correlated, and this is exactly the, what's the meaning of correlation. If we could find these PIJs, which was essentially QI times Q prime J, then that means that they, you could get independence. Here, we don't have this assumption. And so PIJ can be anything. It means that these actions are correlated. So in that sense, actually correlated equilibrium is more complicated than Nash equilibrium. However, the fact that there is no randomization in the actions makes the correlated equilibrium maybe more natural. So the, the thing that Roger Meyerson mentioned, really, I mean, in some sense, natural equilibrium might be a more natural way if you consider independence. But if you consider, okay, correlation is fine. And now the good thing is that then you don't need to have a mixed strategies. In some sense, I just, uh, this is the thing that the God or nature traffic like they compute for you. This is the probability. And then I'm just giving pure actions. I suggest pure actions to the others. So it is like more like a pure natural equilibrium that I will give pure things to the people and say that if you don't change, and you cannot change the probability. I compute the probability. If you change, you are not in a better shape. Uh, so that's it essentially. That's another concept generalization of Nash equilibrium, which is correlated equilibrium. And this is the good things. This LP that I have just uh, mentioned in the uh, previous case is you can actually, you can write this one easily. Uh, so this, if you have, uh, Done, you have done the project, uh, so computing the Nash equilibrium using LP and other things. This is actually much simpler. You can just write this one using PAL, and I'm sure that packages are exist as well. But this is like very easy thing that you can just have it. And as I mentioned, PAs are var variables that for each things you are getting, and you will compute a comp Nash equilibrium. So the fact that we can compute in using an LP is a very big plus as well. So I think uh, I will uh, stop here.